Okay, so today what I got going on is I'm going to be making a uh, chicken bacon ranch jalapeno popper casserole. That's a mouthful to say. So what I'm going to start to do is i um, going to get the jalapenos ready to, uh, to make the uh, poppers with. So basically what I'm going to do is, so I cut the top off and then just going to cut them right down the middle and then Once I got the cut out, I'm going to scrape out the insides. If you do not like stuff that's spicy, spend a little time and uh, scrape out the membranes. That's the hot part. A lot of people say that it's the seeds. It's not. It's the membranes. Um, so once you get those membranes out, it's not hot. I've made... I've made jalapeno poppers, or bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers before, for my mother-in-law who cannot stand spicy stuff at all. Um, if it's hotter than ketchup, she won't eat it. And uh, so I've made jalapeno poppers before and she's had them and she actually ate them and liked them. And the only reason why she was able to handle them is because I scraped out the membranes, which reduces the heat dramatically so it almost like it's almost takes on the 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 heat of like a green pepper so it's very low heat uh, the other thing that helps is by adding in the cream cheese inside so and since my daughter's going to be eating this um, I want to get some of the the heat out of it uh, I don't think she's ready for hot stuff yet. Um, it's only six, so I'm not really going to put her through that. And I think it would be too much trauma to put a six-year-old through. And if you love jalapeno peppers... Um, <laughs> By all means, take the uh, the seeds, plant them. They will grow. I know that for sure. I've done it before. Taking the seeds out of the jalapeno pepper. Um, if you have something to, or what what I've done before that seems to work is you try to get as much of the seeds off of the off of this stuff as possible. And then I usually put them onto a paper towel and let them dry out a little bit. Um, or else you can just put them right in the ground. Once they're dried out, then you can just plant them. And they will grow. And so you can just keep having your own little stock of jalapeno peppers. I'm pretty sure the same thing would work for habaneros if you want to do that. Um, and if you want to even do the same thing with ghost peppers too. So I'm just going to do this for the rest of these. Okay, now that that's done, um, what I've done also is I've turned my oven on to 400 degrees because I want to preheat it for the poppers because uh, I want to cook the jalapeno poppers a little bit so that they're a little tender when I finish the casserole. I don't want them to be super crunchy. I want them to almost be like a regular like jalapeno popper type appetizer when the casserole is done. Because the casserole is only going to cook for a little bit. It only cooks for like 10 to 15 minutes and that's all. So um, what I've got here is I've got some cream cheese. Uh, one package that I've got should be able to do all six of these. Um, you can do however much or however little cream cheese you want. If you wanted to you could even mix some uh, crumbled up bacon inside the cream cheese if you wanted to give a little bit of a different flavor to it. 
So I'm just going to put the cream cheese inside here. Just like that. Put the jalapeno together. And I've got some aluminum foil here. I'm going to roll them up nice and tight because I don't want the cream cheese to leak out. There we go. I'll do that to the rest of these. Okay, so there is all six of them. You can definitely do more if you want to, or you can do less. Uh, that choice is up to you, to how you want to do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put these into the oven. And I'm gonna put them onto a cookie sheet. And I'm gonna cook them for about 10 minutes or so. Just enough to kind of start um, to kind of start uh, softening up the jalapenos a little bit. Like as I said, I don't want the uh, jalapenos to be super crunchy. Um, the other thing you want to do is for this is uh, bacon. You're gonna need about a pound of bacon. Um, since you have the jalapenos in the oven, is also a good time where you can put the bacon in the oven at the same time also. I do have a blog post and a video on cooking bacon in a oven, which is uh, fairly straightforward. So if you want to check that one out, uh, I certainly can to see how to cook the bacon in the oven, but you'll basically just need about a pound of bacon and you're going to need some uh, chicken also. So i um, going to wait for these to cook up a little bit and then... Uh, We'll get going on this recipe and go through everything that we're going to need. So now that the, uh, okay, so I got the chicken cooked. Um, I'm using six chicken breasts just because I'm going to want it making a double batch. Otherwise, you could probably use about three. Um, while the jalapeno poppers are cooking in the oven, I um, only need to cook them for 10 minutes or so just to kind of soften them up a little bit. I'm going to uh, cut the chicken up. up into a little bit bigger than bite-sized pieces. And if you notice, this chicken is coming apart fairly easily. Um, it's one of the nice things about cooking in a pressure cooker is that it just makes it almost like it's falling apart. And another nice thing about cooking the chicken breast, chicken inside the pressure cooker, is that the juice left over is now chicken stock, which that is covered in another video. I'm just cutting this chicken up, and then we're going to put it into a bowl. Like I said, I'm using six chicken breasts here. You don't have to use as much if you don't want to. You can use a lot less. Get all this wonderful chicken inside of my bowl here. Get some of it on the floor. Just a few pieces, not much. Two pieces dropped in the floor. Two very small pieces, I should add. There's still some bigger chunks. But since this is cooked in a pressure cooker, those will wind up um, coming apart and getting smaller fairly nicely. I'm going to move this out of the way, bring um, my bowl here, which I've got, I have got six ounces of um, cream cheese in there that's at room temperature. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to wind up making the, the ranch 
that's going to go into the uh, chicken bacon ranch jalapeno popper casserole and that is a mouthful so what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, one cup of mayo and to be keto friendly and uh, um, gluten free we're going to use the Hellman's Real um, I've covered it in a few other videos as to why I use this uh, there's no carbs in it and it's gluten free so let's make another video as to why I use it so we're going to like I said use a cup of this Heavy whipping cream to which we are going to get our half cup out because we can use half a cup of heavy whipping cream. And this is to once again make our ranch dressing for it. And I am actually going to need since I'm doing a double amount I am going to add in another half a cup of mayo to make it so basically what I'm doing is I'm making the same recipe that I used for making my homemade ranch dressing which is a cup and a half of mayo half a cup of Have whipping cream, and then of course the McCormick's, or not the McCormick's, but the uh, the Hidden Valley Ranch dressing. So I'm using this one. Um, I think it shows right in the bottom. Where is it? I look at all the time. There it is. Gluten free. You can use the whole packet if you want. You can use half a packet. You could use none of the packet. Um, you can make your own. I do have another recipe on my blog for how to make your own homemade ranch dressing without using the packet. But I am going to wind up using this packet and I'm going to use the whole one. Since I'm doing a double batch, and to give it a little bit more of a flavor to it, I I'm going for the going for the full package there. So what we're going to do now is we are going to get our handheld mixer out. Okay, so now that we got our handheld mixer out, uh, normally we, I will use just a wire whisk for this, but since we have the softened cream cheese in there, I am going to use the uh, the handheld mixer. Mixed up very, very, very nicely. Okay, and then to the ranch dressing mixture that we made, we are going to add some regular shredded cheese to it. You can use whichever one you want. If you want to use a if you want to use mozzarella, go for it. If you want to use um, a Fiesta blend, if you want to use a Mexican blend, um, Kojak, whichever one you want to use. And I am adding in a cup of that. Okay. 
Now that we got this, let's mix this up. Set it aside. Now I know I said that there's um, chicken bacon in there, but where's the bacon? Here's the bacon. So it's already pre-cooked. And we're going to use a full pound of it. Now if you don't eat pork, or you don't like bacon, you can certainly use turkey bacon, or you can just leave the bacon out altogether so that it fits your dietary needs. Um, you may be asking, well, who doesn't eat pork? Well, got some friends who do not eat pork. Um, they don't to eat commercially raised pork. But they'll eat, um, they'll eat pork if it was, if they hunted it, or if they, um, I believe if they knew the farmer where it came from and they knew how it was raised, then they would. By the way, they don't like commercially raised pork. And I do know other people like that too, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, this means more bacon for me. I don't have a problem with that at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the bacon, going to add most of it to the chicken about three-fourths of it and I did pull the uh, jalapeno poppers out of the oven and we're gonna have the oven preheated it should already be preheated to 400 degrees but if it's not this is a perfect time to preheat your oven to 400 now we're going to take the ranch dressing that we made with the cream cheese and the cheese and we're going to add it to the chicken and the bacon. So now it's the, now it's like a chicken bacon ranch casserole. So if, like I said, if, if you don't like the, if you don't like pork, leave the bacon out of it. No harm in that whatsoever. Um, you can also use turkey bacon if you want. Um, I even think that maybe there's some even vegan options, but it wouldn't be really vegan with the chicken in here anymore. Um, or even some like vegetarian options for bacon. Um, or just don't put it in there. Now what we're going to do is going to mix it up really nice. Get everything nice and coated. Okay, now that everything is coated and stirred and whatnot, you can add it to the large casserole dish. A little piece of bacon fell off into there. And if you're wondering, this smells amazing. And I probably could have added more chicken in here to fill this up even more, which that's a personal choice if you want to do it or not. Okay, so what about the jalapeno poppers? Well, since those are in the oven, I am going to let them cool for a little bit and then we're going to um, unwrap them. Okay, so I've got five of the six unwrapped already. Some of them, one of them did keep falling apart, just didn't want to stay together. So what I was thinking that also could work for this is that after you let them cool off for a while, you could possibly even stick them into the freezer and let them set up. 
uh, freeze a little bit because then they would be uh, they'd be really easy to work with and it would be e extremely easy to slice. So now that I got those done, I'm gonna let those cool off a little bit more. We are going to get some cheddar cheese, about a cup, a half a cup, cup, somewhere around there. Cover the top. Sprinkle the remaining bacon on top. And now the only thing left to do is to take the jalapeno poppers, cut them in half, and put those on top. And then they can go, go right back into the oven. still really really hot. I think that's the one I just took out last. You may have a little more luck than me with cutting them in half, especially you know if, if you try the whole freezing them first. Um, you may also get better luck using a knife that's sharp. This one is not extremely sharp. You may also even try a serrated one. Those may cut a little bit better. I don't want to press onto them and have some of the cream cheese leak out. And then if you have someone who doesn't like jalapenos or doesn't want to take the risk of getting burnt, um, which if you scraped out the membranes, it should not happen at all. You can just easily just take it off and you eat them. So the last one here. Okay, so now that I've got the jalapeno poppers on the top, like that, all it's really left to do is to put it in the oven we're going to cook it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes just for the cheese to get nice melted and bubbly serve and enjoy and i will show you what it looks like when it's done <laughs> 